Welcome back to C Sharp for Total Noobs. In this second video, we'll talk about what is actually .NET and C Sharp and uh, how does C Sharp relate to other programming language. So is it worth to still study and learn C Sharp or not? Let's see in this video. First of all, let's start by, by a certain aspect. If you go on a certain website where, uh, let's say, programming jobs are posted, when it comes to C Sharp, you mostly will see roles posted as .NET developer and not C Sharp developer. And uh, on the other side, when we talk about Java, you will always uh, see Java developers or C++ developers and so on. So why is this the case? What is a .NET developer actually? Well, the reason why usually we use this .NET developer concept and not C Sharp developer is because .NET is an entire ecosystem. That of course is based on the C Sharp language. But this means that if you learn C Sharp, you are basically able to develop a lot of other applications in a lot of the or on different platforms and so on. So once you know C Sharp, you are free to develop within the entire .NET ecosystem. And as we can see here on the right side, .NET consists of, of a lot of different, let's say, frameworks. Right now, what we are doing is a really oversimplification. But I think that this picture really illustrates how or what actually the .NET ecosystem is. So first of all, we would have something that we call .NET Framework. And this is mostly used to develop applications for Windows. So here you might want to develop what we call uh, WPF applications. So normal desktop applications like maybe your Outlook client or anything else. You could also develop other types of desktop applications like uh, Windows Forms applications or the newer one for Windows 10. This is the universal Windows platform application and so on. On the other side, there is also ASP.NET, which enables you to develop web applications that will run on a Windows server. Now, another very important component here is .NET Core. .NET Core is, is different of, of that .NET Framework in the sense that here we can develop applications cross-platform and cross-operating system. So for instance, if you develop an ASP.NET Core application, this would be a web application. You would be able to host that application both on Linux or on Windows Server. So in comparison to .NET Framework, where we are really tied to Windows, in .NET Core, we are not tied to any operating system or platform. And then we have another component in this .NET ecosystem, which is Xamarin. And Xamarin is used to develop native smartphone applications. So here you can develop applications for Android or applications for iOS without the need to know any Java or Objective-C. So that's why when you say .NET developer, this means that you have, when you know C-sharp, you really have everything what it takes to develop even applications for Android or iOS. In the lower part of the picture, we see the .NET standard library, and we won't dive too deep into, into this one, but when you want to develop your very own class libraries, and don't get, get disheartened if you don't understand what class libraries are, we will learn this during this course. But for instance, if you want to develop dot this, your own libraries, you can develop them in .NET standard, and they would be compatible with all frameworks. So with .NET Framework, with .NET Core, and with Xamarin. Once again, this is really an oversimplification since each of these platforms or frameworks has a lot of different other uh, application types that you can develop and so on. But for now, I think it's enough to, to have a general overview about what the .NET ecosystem is. And uh, really, as a short conclusion to this point, the .NET ecosystem is composed by a lot of or by different other frameworks and the ability to write your own class libraries. So the .NET framework uses C Sharp as a, a software development language. But is C Sharp the right language to learn right now? So let's dive into some statistics that we took from, uh, from other sources 
And this is the uh, Tayobi index, which uh, is a very important index of, uh, of programming languages. I think that uh, Tayobi, this company, does this index for a couple of decades already. And what they basically do, they try to, uh, to make a representation of uh, how different programming languages are used in the IT industry. And this usually translates in this case into market share. So we see here that we have Java, we have C, we have C++, Python and C Sharp. So C Sharp is in the top five coming in this case, which is also for me surprisingly, even before JavaScript. But this is a, a whole other story. And other languages like uh, PHP are way down in these rank uh, rankings or Ruby, there, there isn't uh, on this specific screenshot either. So C Sharp, we see here that is one of the top five development uh, languages, and this is really encouraging. But the next thing I think is more encouraging. Indeed is, I think, the biggest uh, website where job openings are posted. And there are a lot or most of the job openings are related to software development. And there in December 2017, when we see the number of postings for different uh, programming languages, we see here that C Sharp is on third place, which is very cool. It comes even before Python, C++ and C. PHP and Ruby again are way down in the rankings. So looking at these statistics, it seems to be clear that C Sharp is really a language that is useful nowadays. So if you have C Sharp in your skill set, it uh, won't be very difficult to find a job. Now, C Sharp, uh, how does it relate to other programming languages? Because we saw earlier on some lists uh, programming languages like C and C++ and let's go back a while to the Tayobi index and we really see that uh, before C Sharp we have C and C++. Now the main difference between C Sharp and C and C++ is that C Sharp uh, does a lot of abstractions. So it really abstracts away a lot of the complexities and therefore it is easier to learn. For instance, you might often uh, see that in C you would have to take care of memory allocation, uh, you would have to take care of pointers and so on. And all these things in C Sharp are done uh, by the .NET framework. So you don't need to take care of these uh, things yourself. And this makes C Sharp really a, a language that is easier to learn than C or C++. On the other hand, with C Sharp, you can develop for any platform and any OS. And this is, in my opinion, really impressive because if you want to develop a web application to run on Linux, you can do that. If you want to develop an application for Xbox, you are free to do it. There is really no restriction, you, you can do it. If you want to uh, write an application for Android or iOS, you, you can do it also. So C Sharp really allows you to develop for any platform and any uh, operating system. And this is the main mission of the entire .NET team at Microsoft. Last but not least, uh, C Sharp and uh, .NET has really excellent tooling and a vibrant community. And tooling is very important because you will see when you have to develop applications for production or let's say more complex applications, you would have to take care of libraries, of uh, you would have to take care of uh, library versions and so on. And for instance, in other frameworks and in other programming languages, this could be a real hell. But in comparison to other languages in C Sharp using the .NET framework and the tooling that we have with Visual Studio, uh, things are not that complicated as in other programming languages. And if you, might have, if, if you might have some questions, if you don't understand something, if you have a problem, uh, the internet is full with uh, answers and questions on C Sharp, both on Stack Overflow, on MSDN, and also uh, on other websites and uh, web applications. So if you ever face a problem until it was my case, until now, I never had a problem that I was not able to find a solution online. And this is really important, especially for those who just want to start their way to become a software developer. So looking on uh, at all these things together, I think that it makes a lot of sense to choose C Sharp and .NET if you want to become a software developer. 
And during this course, we will tackle all the basic and core concepts of C Sharp and .NET so that at the end of this course, you would already be able to develop small console applications that have logic in it and that follow certain, uh, certain best practices and principles. So I hope to see you also in the next video where we will start to look at Visual Studio and we will also build our first program. You heard correctly, we will build our first program just right at the start of this training. So hope to see you there.